where where you know what they really mean is x could be anything and this could come out of a pinhole model so whatever 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 is this information right that you are seeking from x so the x could be some information that is coming out because you have a you have a pinhole camera or it could be simply that you have a, you have a real aperture camera some aperture camera or you know there are actually methods that do a cooperative kind of algorithm which means that which means that they will exploit the fact that fact that you know there are some things that are valid with respect to the pinhole model too even though you may use you may be using a real aperture camera like we also did right there are certain things that we knew were valid equally valid right there you know even though you are using a real aperture camera but there are certain principles from the from a pinhole model which are still applicable and therefore we use them right so there are there are actually methods that would simply assume uh, everything to be completely in focus which means which means like you know a pinhole model so you can't get any kind of blur there a real aperture camera where you might say that well you know it, uh, it depends upon the scene and all that and 3d scenes will generate blur and so on and there are and which means that, that they may simply simply exploit something related to image formation in lens and there are these other methods that might actually try to combine cues coming from both okay they may say that the central ray actually still follows a stereo law and therefore i mean that right, you can you can use stereo algorithms that are typically used on focused images you can use them even on a on a real aperture camera and so on so so that these there are this cooperative what are called cooperative methods okay and there is and there is a there is a whole a lot of things okay that happen here and this is really a vision sort of thing okay these things come under what is called computer vision and uh, this this the, the 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 boundary between computer vision and image processing a little blurred okay somewhere they, they you don't know where you are but uh, typically uh, i mean a computer vision is more about uh, telling more about the scene okay it's less about the image per se but using the image to tell more about the scene okay whereas image processing is like you have an image and you want to process and so on okay so so normally image processing will fill feed into feed into computer vision right now here right so what do you think could be like cues i mean suppose i gave you an image what kind of cues do you think you will use in order to like for example right we ourselves what do you think we use right when i see you right i know that okay, okay there is a scene there i'm i'm so careful when i write i know what is where what are all the things that possibly the i uses let's let's kind of write them down one by one first thing is stereo right okay we we all know that there is a pair of eyes and therefore right there is a there is a reason for it uh, stereo ah hmm okay wait let's write it properly stereo hmm then anyway stereo also has something called a two view stereo then multi view stereo and so on okay stereo doesn't always mean just you know stay with two images or something that's like two view stereo so most common thing you can have multiple views multi that's called multi view stereo right defocus blur there's something called you know along with this you know so there is something called shape from focus also okay and uh, and I'll tell you what those things mean shape from focus something called shape from defocus and uh, shape from focus and uh, hmm, okay uh, stereo defocus shape from focus then then there is something called uh, and how many of you have seen shape from shading there is something called shape from shading i okay, will show you some examples so that right, you get an idea okay and then there is something called photometric stereo so so along with stereo i told you this multi view and all so in all of that the camera has moved but there is something else in which in which the camera has not moved it is called photometric stereo there is also something called shape from texture this is not so common but it is there a texture then um, shape from shading shape from focus okay but okay by the way right i mean we talk about shape from focus i forgot to tell you that uh, that there are kind of say two two kind of classes there okay there is one that is active Okay, one one that is actually passive. So active is your is your say is your when you talk about the like Kinect or when you talk about a lidar, right? All these all these are active in the sense that they they kind of throw something. So they are active in the sense that right? I mean, it's not a passive scheme. So they would either throw a, throw a light pattern on the scene or they would actually send out a beam. They will actually you know they'll try to compute uh, time of flight. 
just like you do echo, right? So you send something and then you wait for the wait for the echo to return. So you get a sense of how far away the objects are. So all these are like active, and active things are you know are typically either they are very expensive or or in terms of in terms of their usage, right? You can only use them under certain constraint conditions, and so on. The passive ones, there is still a lot of interest in passive. Okay, passive is the one which we normally for us passive basically right if you use images. So passive is is where is where kind of we are now. So all that we are saying is. The cam, right? We are simply capturing images. Okay, so the scene is kind of active for us. The scene is giving out intensities, and we are capturing them. And uh, now, once you have these images, right? We want to be able to tell what is where. And shape typically means a 3D shape of the object. You can also call it depth map, or you can call it shape because if you have a depth map, then you know, say, relatively where every point is with respect to the other. That's shape, right? Now, photometric studio texture and all this. So, so our focus is here in passive, and that too we are ready to. We are not going to do all of this and so on. Okay, there is no time for that. So I am going to talk about just one method in detail. Okay, so the first one, right, is really a photometric, uh, photometric. Uh, no, right, this is shape from shading. Okay, so here you have just one image. Okay, so shape from shading typically means that, right, if you if you see an object, okay, if I just give you a single image, so this is one of the hardest, by the way. Okay, in the sense that I just actually uh, actually right, we can we you know we can do it rather well. We as humans, because when somebody shows us a photograph, there is there is nothing like a 3D in the photograph, right? It's a planar thing, right? And on a planar surface, something is something is there. And then when we just look at it, even if I give you, let's say, you know, image of a sphere, okay? When I just see the sphere, I know that it's a sphere, right? I know that you know it, you know it's it's probably curving and all that. So all, so we what what one of the things that we use is, of course, our brain uses multiple things, you know, but one of the things that we use is called what is called shading. So what shading means is that depending upon where the light source is, and depending upon where where the camera is, and depending upon how the surface normals are on the on the on the object surface. So the surface normals, right? I mean, if you kind of think of a sphere, so the surface normal. Suppose think of it like this, right? And let's say let's say you have a camera looking at it from somewhere, and then assume that right, you have a light source shining from there. So what it will mean is what it will mean is so you have a surface normal that is going right here. You know, like this, and then and then it will slowly turn, and then when when then by the time you come to the top of the top of the sphere, right, it's it's upwards. So what will happen is, so the angle that the surface normal right makes with respect to the light source is what will is what will tell you, and uh, you know that there's a there's a law for that, and based upon that law, right, it will tell you, it will give you a given give you uh, give you the intensity that you're likely to get get uh, get in the camera for that point, and this also depends upon. What is called an albedo of the surface, and so on, because you know you can have you can have you know a material characteristic that could change you know through the surface. If it's sphere made out of one material, then probably it doesn't matter. But then you could have multiple materials, you know, being uh, being exposed to a light source. So so this shading, right? So the shading is this is this change in the intensity as a function of the surface normal and and uh, and where the light source is. So it you know it seems like you know when you when you when you see an image. Right, we are able to we are able to make out all that. I mean, we may not be able to exactly tell what the right what point is at what depth and so on, but we have a rough idea just by looking at one single image. So, so shape from shading is something that banks banks on that law, okay? And uh, and and it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a well understood law, except that except that it's uh, no except that uh, it's a kind of the ill post problem, okay? Because because right, I mean, and eventually you have only one one image to look at, and then and then you have this albedo which is unknown. Then you have the surface normal which is unknown. Therefore, there is only one known which is an intensity, and based upon one known, you have to estimate multiple unknowns, right? So it's a kind of an ill post problem. So this is not something that that we do in in this course, but I just wanted to wanted to show you an example. So can you can you see this guy's uh, face? Sort of the, there is the nose, right? There are the eyes. I don't know, guys at the back. Maybe I should have picked up a picked up a, say, a better reconstruction. This is I picked up from the from the net. Somebody had done this. I can show you an example where we probably you can appreciate it even better. Hmm? But I hope you are able to see the eyes there, the nose there, and then the hair there. Right? Hmm? You can make out, no? Then uh, the next one, okay, as you go, to, huh? Oh, oh! We are just using this one single image, okay? The one image on the left, right? We're just using this image. So, so this is like one single image, okay, of this statue that you have. So, it's like saying, if I had, let's say, Mozart statue in front of me, and I had some light source which is shining on it, and then I viewed it, okay, through a camera, then whatever is that is that image that I get, the idea is that the image is a function of the surface normals of this object, 
and also and also and also relative to relative to these normals where is my where is my light source uh, can i say direction so, huh. sorry depth map yeah the right is actually a depth map well i mean if you if you talk about something that is totally uncalibrated yeah in that case you don't know where the light source is you don't know you don't know you don't know anything but if it's a calibrated situation you can assume that that you know you know kind of where the light source is and then only the normals are unknown that is okay but uh, yeah so there is something called uh, called a base relief kind of the ambiguity the base relief ambiguity depends upon what all you assume what all you don't assume and so on the most general case right i mean you may not even get so for example right if you are asking whether i get absolute depth map no when I mean, you may get the, the get the depth map up to a similarity up to a, up to a, up to a euclidean depending upon what you assume to be known and what you assume to be unknown right so so the whole thing there is a whole set that is kind of uncalibrated which is the most complex thing where you don't assume anything at all and then a calibrated thing where you where you sort of where you can kind of say tie things down at least you know that some things are known right and the more uncalibrated you go in the sense that you know you just you just take a camera walk around you capture pictures don't assume anything at all okay that will so the more uncalibrated you go then the depth map and all that you estimate is only up to a factor that factor could be simply scale i mean if you, if you know a lot then it can go up to a similarity it can go to an affine depending upon how much you do not know okay but that's okay you know people are happy with that because you know instead of not having anything you at least have something now okay so this is uh, this is okay the shape from shading i'm not able to write there okay this becomes too big okay now the other one okay this is called photometric stereo what do you see here again this is supposed to be a depth map of this guy this is the reconstructed face what do you what do you find uh, there are four images here exactly so the light source has changed so from where you are shining the light has changed but then the object is remaining exactly there okay we are not so it's it's like the camera is not being shifted right so every point every point so for example for example right so the so the ear here right if i if i mark a point that the ear is exactly at the same location okay nothing has changed okay so even where from where the camera is taking the picture that is not being changed so but then it's called it's called a photometric stereo okay but actually it doesn't use in stereo you would actually translate the camera right here you don't translate the camera the camera is sitting bang there the object is sitting right there you don't move these two only thing that you move is this kind of a light source so you take one from here you know you shine a light from there you shine of course not from the back right and then you shine something from here and then you can get four right or more whatever okay and and there are certain conditions that you have to meet 